Howdy, howdy. Welcome to the Body Meets Mind podcast. This is Paulie and Tommy. It's a pleasure to have you on the show, my friend. Mate, very, very kind. And uh, actually, you know what? It is. It is a pleasure for you to have me. Uh, there's a lot to like about me. Uh, I like that. That's very effective communicating, which brings <laughs> to exactly what we're going to be talking about. And I thought we'd address it straight in the bullseye because we're talking about effective communication, whether it's at the workplace, um, in a family household, um, with your significant other, with friends. Um, there's so much dancing around certain topics that the the power of communication can really get lost in um, potentially feeling like you might be hurting somebody's feelings or not feeling like you can truly kind of get to what the the sense and the soul of what you want to be able to address so i'm looking forward to communicating about this communication (laughs) mate uh, me too it's um it's it's the it's the one conduit that we have um to being able to understand each other's experience and 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 it's it it is prioritized to a degree but i mean it's got to be the, the absolute fundamental thing that we, that we should, there should be a communication class from prep to year 12, you know, and we mm. should have that developmentally and gradually, um, you know, increased to the degree that we can handle that because it, it should be the, 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 the thing and the tool that, that we all have under our belts at all times. It's so much in not just being able to get what you want out of life. And I don't mean that in a, you know, like a, in an ugly way. I mean, being able to get what you and the person that you're communicating with um, out of like a win-win scenario. And the only way that happens is with effective communication because right. it's so easy to come to a situation with like a defensive mindset. <laughs> the moment that happens, no one's winning. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh you know, I mean, what you just said there is a fantastic segue into self-awareness, I suppose, to begin with, because more often than not, when we do come to these situations with with defensive mindsets, um, anger, fear, when we're triggered by things, we're not aware of any of that. That's just how we respond. Mm-hmm. And then when you learn more about yourself, you realize that whatever the other person said, if, you know, affected you on a subconscious level, because maybe there was a time in your life when that led to some sort of physical or emotional pain, you know, Mm -hmm. a lack of validation, a lack of love or support. So no wonder, you know, your, your, your primal being is going to defend you against that um, because it fears that the same might happen again. So Mm -hmm. self-awareness is absolutely intrinsic to being a good communicator. Take, take me through this, Tommy. So uh, let's, let's go, let's use an example to be able to illustrate what you just said there. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. So, um, you can picture a uh, a relationship situation um, where you know, let's just say, for example, I always, when I'm whenever I'm working with couples, I always use um, dish washing the dishes as an example because to me, it's something that we can all kind of find funny. It's so subtle, trivial, you know, it's it's almost cliche as well, um, but it's kind of funny, you know. So you can picture a scenario where someone comes home from work, um, they're really buggered, and they come home, they're they're starving. Um, the, the, the dishes are still out because the other person, um, the other partner hadn't, hadn't washed them. Who knows who, whose responsibility it was because they haven't had that conversation yet. It's just one of yeah. those under the carpet sort of situations. The person is resentful because, um, they now have to clean the dishes on top of making their own food. It's been a long day. No one's perfect. Um, but because they're unaware as to that resentment or, um, they're a little bit, you know, they're just kind of buggered. They come to the other person like, and they say, Hey, you know, what happened with the dishes now already you might suggest, unless it was explicitly stated that it was the other person's responsibility to do those dishes, they could have come across in a less aggressive way, you know, something akin to, um, how was your day? You know, find out why the dishes hadn't been done yet. Anyway, that's, that's a side point. Yeah. They come across, they come home and they say, they see the dishes and they say, hey, why hasn't the dishes been done yet? Now, immediately the other person feels a bolt of fear 
because in their home life, when they were kind of eight or 10, they saw a lot of physical abuse. Their parents weren't good communicators. Their, um, the, the, the dishwashing, um, although trivial, was a point of massive conflict in the relationship and would often lead to perhaps the dad, um, you know, beating the, the wife or, or perhaps the other way around, the wife becoming very icy and cold or even beating the husband as well. Who knows? Yeah. In other words, any conflict that surrounds the washing of the dishes is a highly threatening, affective situation for this other mm -hmm. partner. So they respond subconsciously in a protective state. Well, I just, I don't know, fuck you, you know, something like yeah. that. And all of a sudden, bang, there's this massive conflict. And the washing of the dishes is a symptom of just each partner's inability to recognize their own patterns and traumas. So one who's a little bit more self-reflective and it, t it takes a lot of skill and practice and you got to stumble up the mountain as Jordan Peterson says, I really love that analogy, you know, keep yeah. falling down, but you are getting there. Um, I like it. A better situation is even in the beginning, Hey, you know what I'm like with the dishes, my, my body just responds in a lot of stress. Can you give me 15 minutes to just breathe all this out? And then I'll come back again. The other part might say, Hey, I totally recognize that, I kind of brought work home. Um, let me breathe that out. I'll <clears> the, box, the boxing bag for a little bit and then we can have a conversation. But yeah. really, unmet needs. Someone wasn't aware that they had to do the dishes on that person's time. Yep. The other person just wanted to have some food. So mm -hmm. it is interesting. It is. And, you know, the I suppose the resolution that you offer there is beautiful because it's <laughs> it's it's offering and announcing a certain level of vulnerability. It's saying, you know, I actually just need your support for just a period of time because you're my significant other and I need to just digest this day. And the very act of being able to announce that from a vulnerable, open, asking for support position versus this defensive uh you know, space and anger that comes from, and there's no root, there's no source of fault in and amongst these, these two right. people that are having this argument. It's just the sole communication um, and the act of communication can create two completely different um, results from this conflict. And as a result of that, it can actually span into a really, really, unhealthy path that a relationship can take versus an incredibly supportive path that a, a relationship can take. Cause that can turn into, I don't know, the garbage being taken out or um, feeling uh, rejected um, because of a physical advance that, that one partner wanted to, to, to have later that night, you know, right. um, there are so many different repercussions that can take place because of this but if you have like a foundational system of communication that you're talking about and I feel like that's a, that was a wonderful example but it's like how do we create a framework for and let's just use couples yep um significant others how do we use a framework of um respectful communication but also openness and empathy and vulnerability so you can really really like be open bare naked and safe in each other's kind of company so you can grow together and actually blossom into something that is even better every day yeah well i mean it, it is a leap of faith to to place your trust in someone else knowing that as a human being <laughs> who exists upon a spectrum of good and evil, they could turn around one day and, and, and really betray your trust, you know? And so that, that is a leap of faith in that regard. But I think what we, what both partners need to bring to the table is this um, forthright um, almost line in the sand that, you know, I am going to practice, and learn about emotional intelligence, which is just the ability to feel a certain feeling mm. without necessarily reacting to it. And even just in the beginning, feeling a certain way and really feeling it is 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 akin to is akin to not judging the way you feel and and mm. owning that. 
you know, because often we judge the way we feel all the time. Yeah. You know, some people, people judge their own sexual desires. People can't stand the fact that they all, they always get teary in a certain movie. People can't stand that something that really is trivial and innocuous, um, um, makes them very angry. Mm. But feeling that firstly and going, this is how I'm feeling, you know, it means that it's not projected subconsciously. I think in the very beginning, I mean, you know, practically I'm such a big believer in couples counseling because it puts someone in between the two and just to go, Oh, that's funny. When you're saying that, does that make you feel a, B and C? And then the other person says, yeah. Okay. Oh, so that's an unmet need there. That's really interesting. And isn't that interesting that because you're feeling that way, you feel this way. And mm. so what we're trying to do in, in, is, is put the pieces together and go, this is why we're feeling like this. Mm. And, and, and even just the willingness for both parties to say, you know what, let's do couples counseling means that they're willing to learn and improve the situation. And it's, yeah. it's a first step on, 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 on lots of sets, but you don't have to do it. You don't have to do couples counseling. If you guys can figure this out. Mm -hmm. um, but what do you think, mate? What do you, what do you think? <clears throat> good skills? Well, well, on couples counseling, uh, just because you mentioned it, sure. I, I think you can approach it from a couple of different angles. Like a lot, I think a lot of people approach the potential of couples counseling as fixing something that is broken or the potential right. to make something so unbelievably strong and powerful and impenetrable nice. and malleable and flexible because you guys are so not just aware of your own emotional tendencies and uh you know resilience but the the the, the partnerships emotional flexibility and um flaws and uh vulnerabilities you know once you bring some a skilled worker into that room to be able to facilitate that you just open up a brand new, whole new world where you're just like it's almost like you can speak a different language with yes. each other then, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I really love that point that you made. Um, and I think, and I actually be really interested to hear your perspective on this is that part of the reason why couples counseling is stigmatized and it's viewed as, Oh my God, where you only go to couples counseling. If, uh, as you said, something's broken, <laughs> maybe it's because, psychologist, counselor, therapy, these kind of loaded terms. But what we're really talking about is coaching in this degree, in this, in this area, because coaching, in my opinion, the kind of positive associations that come with coaching is the, the, the wanting to improve, you know, mm -hmm. like a, like a, a gym coach, a, a trainer. Um, no one stigmatizes those. Mm. Like everyone's like, yeah, cool. Awesome. You want to improve. Maybe we need to change the terms a little bit. <laughs> No, it's a it's a really valid point that you raise, and you know, if you're a high performance athlete, every every high performance athlete has a coach, right? Right. Do you guys want to be a high performance couple? Right. Exactly. You know, uh, you don't need to be recovering from uh, surgery. <laughs> in, in, if if you if we use this same analogy, you don't need to be you know, recovering from a broken leg to be able to, you know, retrain your ability to walk, to have coaching. You can fly to the moon and back as a couple. Right. And you can. And I think this is what, that's a really important point for, for couples out there. There are a lot of these generalizations, you know, it's like, oh, after marriage, you know, um, it's like, yeah, the honeymoon phase, you know, that's, that's, that was in the past and, and it, it doesn't have to be. I mean, it changes. You know, a lot of what's honeymoon, it's in the honeymoon is just, you guys are just on drugs, you know, dopamine totally. skyrocketing, oxytocin skyrocketing, like it, it's a drug, it is a drug, you know, Obviously. but it can shift and you sacrifice a little bit of that pleasure for a whole heap of intimacy and you don't sacrifice all of the pleasure, but it comes more meaningful. You learn more yeah. about the other person and you've got a partnership and yeah. I think a lot of people feel guilty that they don't look at their partner the same way as regularly or as often as they did when they first when they were on drugs because <laughs> they're you're on drugs you're right literally on mdma yeah like <laughs> for for you know six months right exactly 
It's a big trip. <laughs> <laughs> it's a massive trip. And sometimes there's a come down. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think when, when you go through changes like that, having new things to be excited by, new goals to pull the relationship forward is really important. And I think this whole idea that, you know, our society is very much woven into the, the, the concept of relationships is in the beginning, it's all wonderfully exciting. And who knows the final goal being marriage, we could get there. But then what about after everyone just goes, Ew. you know, and it's like, what about other goals that are bringing you forward? I mean, we have to remember neurochemically that <clears throat> goals that excite us um, are massively, a massive drivers for the dopamine system, which is where our excitement and pleasure comes from fundamentally. Mm. So you can get some of that honeymoon stuff back into the relationship if you're conscious about it. So let's, let's uh, get practical here. Okay. So let's say a couple has just gone through that holiday period. They literally cannot keep their hands off of each other for like six months. Like they have not come up for air. Like <laughs> DNA is just all over the place. Yeah, right? that's right. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, things are starting to cool off now and they, they step into a long-term relationship and all of a sudden this fire that they, you know, had referenced in the honeymoon period is no longer burning as brightly. Mm. How do we, how do we reignite that fire? How do we start to find the appeal, the power, the fire in our relationship that, that was once there? Well, this is exactly where communication comes in, you know, um, and, you know, just as a quick tangent, something that I also see with people now is that they bring this heavy set communication too early into the relationship when it should just be about fun and sex and, you know, not giving a shit and, you know, you know, yeah. people go, what are your traumas? What are your, you know, it's just like, that's too heavy for the beginning, you know, absolutely. You can, I mean, you can entertain it lightly, but you don't want to put that on someone else when it's, when you want them to excite, be excited by you and miss you and so forth. So, you know, it, it, you don't want to do that too early, but when, when, when the communication starts to become really apparent, that's when you can start to have these conversations in a, in a lighthearted, you know, um, albeit serious way. It's um, tell me about your sexual needs, you know, um, let, I'd, I'd, I'd love to hear about um, what keeps your cups filled in, in these domains. You know, what are you excited by in the future? What are you building towards? Because we all need our own sense of purpose and drive, but mm. the relationship needs that as well because mm. otherwise there's no point in having the relationship. If you guys aren't growing together through honesty, through love, through service to one another, perhaps through service to your local communities or whatever it is you do, there is almost by definition no point in the relationship other than perhaps sexual transactions, you know? You're, you're spot on. Um, you know, when – I don't know if I mentioned this to you on a previous podcast, but – um, when me and my wife got married, we were married by a, a rabbi, we were both Jewish. And this rabbi happens to be coming on our, our show in the coming weeks. Yep. But he said something, and I believe it was him, uh, um, to us when we were, we were getting married. And he was, you know, you, you were talking about like sexual desire and all that kind of stuff. He said, don't let one awkward conversation potentially awkward conversation in the bedroom or outside of the bedroom lead to an entire lifetime of unsatisfied communication you know that is insanity mm. yeah mm. i love that i mean you know you've got to get the the sexual component right you know for a lot of relationships that's what initially brings them together and then to pretend or or come under this false narrative that you know it it uh, it it dies when the honeymoon phase dies is just ridiculous, you mm -hmm. know. And part of it is honesty and 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 being brave enough to let the other person know what turns you on, what you like, what you perhaps even like to explore. And you can do this in 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 really powerful um, de-escalating, you know. Um, ways you know oftentimes it's just because we're talking about the sexuality component here um 
when 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 um when the rivers run dry, so to speak, one partner is either resentful because they're not having their sexual needs met. The other one is two, although they're the ones that are kind of pulling back because they don't mm. feel turned on and, and in the in the mood. So mm. for the person who's resentful, um, I, I I have a tendency to believe that resentment is our own responsibility and we need and it dies in the face of expression. And what we can do yes, is say, hey, you know, what um what turns you on? You know, a a, a question that I got from Tom Billy as well is um you know, what, what did I used to do that I don't do anymore that you'd like me to do again, you know, because it invites them to tell you, as opposed to you saying, you don't do this enough and we need to be doing this more. You know, it's a really great way to invite mm. that conversation without putting the other in the wrong. Mm. Sure is. And uh, reminds me of something that Alex uh, Hormozis, yeah. Hormozy uh, yeah. once said, I, and I think I just saw it as a flash come up. Yeah. Um, he said, if you want to be a really great partner, you just go up to your significant other and say, in a perfect world, in a perfect day, if I was doing things that was your perfect partner and perfect husband, what are the, the things that you would like me to do? Yes. And that person will tell you what it is. And you said, just just do that every day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then you've got to do it. (laughs) You can't just ask. That's like the first step. (laughs) You know, like, I mean, like, and it's like, it's said in jest. I don't think it is said in jest, actually, but like, depending on what the requests are, you know, cut off your arm. Um, Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> exactly like uh, i suppose <laughs> okay uh, why maybe we should do couples counseling <laughs> yeah exactly but we're not broken <laughs> no that's right my arm is <laughs> <laughs> anyway it's you know it, it, sometimes sometimes i feel like the path from a to b can be really direct right and i love i love the way he described that because it was so simple and it was so direct yes. it's like ask your, your partner what they like how do they like to be treated? How do they like to be treated in the bedroom? How do they like to, to be treated emotionally? Mm. And then do it. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And you might even say, hey, I don't even, I don't actually even know how to do that. Um, I, I, I was never given the tools as a child to understand my emotions, to talk about how I feel. What does that even mean? I don't know what you mean mm. when you are when you say that you want me to do that. But I'm gonna go and learn. Do you have yeah. people that you follow in mind? You know, mm-hmm. let me know. I, I want to learn, you know. And um, it might feel a bit tedious and you might be going into unexplored territory, but that is also part of the growth that happens in relationships is that the other person will take you and the relationship to uncharted territory. Mm. And to really wind this out, you don't want the relationship to be comfortable, you know. You don't want it to be ridiculously uncomfortable, but it want, you want it to be an adventure because then yeah. you can look back on it and go, oh, my God, I did not expect us to wind up here. And yet here mm-hmm. we are. And thank you. That was amazing. Yeah, very cool. You want to be challenged by your partner. You want to go on an adventure with them. And uh, um, I think that's uh, a wonderful place to kind of wind this down because you don't want to write your entire, um, you know, script from the beginning of the story because that's right. boring. Yes. Yes, exactly. That's exactly right, mate. I mean, we do that in this show. We, we make sure not to write the script because we don't know where the hell it's going to take us. And, and, and I feel like if we did write the script, it would be a bit shit. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> That's a good place to finish. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming along with for our um, kind of tangents and uh, unscripted beautiful uh dribble at times love it